In this video, we're going to take an overview of the steps of the viral replication cycle. We'll delve into a lot of these steps in more detail later, but this video will just give us a big picture of all the steps involved in viral replication. For an animal virus, there's really six steps of viral replication. Attachment, penetration, uncoating, biosynthesis, assembly, and egress, or getting out of the cell. Let's take these in order. The first step is attachment. Now I have drawn in green a cell membrane with some green proteins coming off of that cell membrane. There is also a nucleus inside of our cell and a host cell ribosome. Here is our virus with its icosahedral capsid, its nucleic acid on the inside, and I'm going to draw some spike proteins attached to that capsid and coming out from it. Now this virus is going to attach to the host cell by means of those spike proteins. They're going to dock on that green protein I drew on the cytoplasmic membrane, and that docking allows the virus to attach to the cell and begin the process of viral replication. The interaction between viruses and cells require a very specific fit, kind of like an enzyme and its substrate. These cellular parts, we call viral receptors. Even though they have a real function for the cell, they're being usurped by viruses to allow for attachment. And these parts of the viruses that facilitate that attachment, we call attachment proteins. Once our virus has attached, the next step is penetration. This just means to get that virus inside the cell where replication actually occurs. There are several different mechanisms by which viruses can get into cells, and we will talk about those in depth in a later video. For today, though, let's just draw our virus getting into that cell, and as it gets in, it's going to lose those spike proteins, and the capsid and genetic information will be delivered into the inside of the cell. All right, so our virus is inside the cell, it still isn't ready to replicate yet. It needs to go through the third step, which is uncoding. And in uncoding, this is the removal of the genetic material from the viral capsid. And this step is necessary and critical to let that genome out so that the genome can be replicated and it can be used to facilitate and direct protein synthesis. The most common way this happens is that viral capsid proteins get degraded by enzymes in the cell cytoplasm that break down the capsid and that facilitates the release of the viral genome into the cell. Now that our viral genome has been released into the cell, the virus is ready to start the most complicated part of replication, which is biosynthesis. There are two steps to biosynthesis. One step is replication of the viral genome. The other step is making new capsid and envelope proteins that will make up the structure of new virions. Now here we have our free viral genome, and it will be used as a template to facilitate mRNA synthesis. Different viruses make their messenger RNAs in different ways, depending on the type of genome that they have. And if you recall, this is the basis for the Baltimore system of classifying viruses, which we'll talk about more later. But regardless of how these messenger RNAs arise, all viruses must use host ribosomes to translate those messenger RNAs into proteins. No viruses encode the machinery for ribosomes. They all use host ribosomes, and they all use host amino acids. Now, the viral genome will also be used as a template for replication and creation of more viral genomes. For nucleic acid synthesis, whether it's the genome or the messenger RNA, all of the nucleotides and the energy is going to come from the host cell. However, most viruses encode their own polymerases to make their own genomes. There are a few exceptions with our nuclear replicating viruses. Now, protein synthesis is always going to occur in the cytoplasm of the infected cell. And in fact, the entire replication cycle can occur totally in the cytoplasm. However, some viruses carry out a part of their replication cycle in the nucleus as well. Usually that's DNA viruses who replicate their genome in the nucleus, but some RNA viruses can carry out 
part of their replication cycle in the nucleus. And there are some DNA viruses who carry everything out in the cytoplasm of the cell. All those individual capsimere proteins made during biosynthesis are going to come together to form viral capsids. And this is a part of the process of assembly, or the process by which all of the viral proteins will combine with the viral genome to make new fully assembled virions. Now I'm diagramming this as a fully made capsid that combines with a fully made genome to put the genome in the middle of it. But what usually happens is that the capsid tends to be built around the newly made genomes and packaged that way. These fully formed viruses that are still in the cell are called virions. The last step of the viral replication cycle is egress or release which is just a way of saying that these newly made viruses are going to exit the host cell. The simplest way for a virus to get out of the cell is to cause a lysis of that host cell, or a bursting of the host cell from the membrane. In some way or another, the virus facilitates pushing a hole through the host cell membrane, and then the viruses leave through that hole, they diffuse out of the cell membrane into the extracellular space, where they are now free to find a new host cell to infect and to start the whole process over again. The second and more complicated way that viruses can leave a cell is through a process called budding. In budding, our newly made viruses assemble and interact with the host cell membrane, causing it to begin to push out away from the body of the cell. This continues until the entire virion plus lipid bilayer is completely removed from the cell. This is one way that our enveloped viruses acquire their envelope from the plasma membrane. Some viruses do bud from the endoplasmic reticulum membrane and acquire their envelope there, but that's a slightly different and more complicated process. Regardless of how viruses leave the host cell, that cell is going to die. So that's it. That's your overview of viral replication.